from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, October the 22nd, 2018. An IDF soldier was lightly injured this morning in a terror attack in the West Bank. The incident took place near the Tomb of the Patriarchs in Hebron, where a Palestinian attacked the soldier with a pair of scissors. The two struggled, and the soldier was able to distance himself from the terrorist and shoot at him, as did other troops at the scene. The terrorist was said to have been neutralized. It is not clear if he was dead. The injured soldier was a member of Kogat, the coordinator of government activities in the territories. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. The IDF today said that the Lebanese Hezbollah terror group is posing as an environmental organization in order to carry out secret activities along the border with Israel. Last summer, the IDF identified five observation posts also being used by the terror group under the same guise of the so-called Green Without Borders group. Today, an unnamed senior IDF official was cited by Israeli media saying that they had discovered a new observation post being used to gather intelligence and notified UNIFIL, the UN peacekeeping force in Lebanon, who said they had not observed anything suspicious at the location. The vice president of China arrived in Israel today. Wang Kishan was welcomed at Ben-Gurion Airport by Israel's Minister of Energy, Yuval Steinitz, and met tonight with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for a series of high-level talks on economic cooperation. And on Wednesday, the two will co-host the fourth meeting of the China-Israel Joint Committee on Innovation Cooperation. Kishan will also meet with Israeli President Reuven Rivlin and other officials. And Netanyahu also met today with visiting U.S. Congresswoman Ileana Ross Lettinen. The Florida Republican is retiring after a 38-year-long career. And Netanyahu thanked her for her activity on behalf of Israel. He said, we have never had a better defender of Israel and a better defender of the truth. Jordan's King Abdallah announced yesterday that he plans on not renewing two annexes of Jordan's 1994 peace treaty with Israel when they come up for renewal next month. The annexes allow Israel to lease two border areas from the Jordanians, Bakura and Gamar, for 25 years, which is up next year. King Abdallah wrote on social media, our decision is to terminate the Bakura and Gamar annexes from the peace treaty out of our keenness to take all decisions that would serve Jordan and Jordanians. Prime Minister Netanyahu said in response that Israel intends to negotiate with Jordan over extending the lease. Well, thousands of Israelis gathered last night to remember the late Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, who was murdered on November the 4th of 1995 by Israeli extremist Igal Amir, right after Rabin had attended a peace rally in what is now known as Rabin Square in Tel Aviv. Throngs of people came to the square last night to mourn and remember the late leader. An official state ceremony was also held on Mount Herzl and at the president's residence in Jerusalem. And Israel's President Reuven Rivlin inaugurated a new visitor center at the residence. Rivlin made a point to stress that the new center will be open to the entire Israeli public. He said the president's residence is the home of all Israelis, not of the majority, but of the whole people. The gates of the president's residence, he said, were not built to keep Israeli society out, but rather to give them a dignified entry to their own home. And staying with Rivlin, the Israeli leader addressed the opening of the Jewish Federations of North America's General Assembly in Jerusalem today, where he stressed the need for communication and understanding between Israel and diaspora Jewry. He said, we have to talk and we need to listen. He also mentioned his support for a possible new initiative, a reverse birthright trip for young Israelis to get to know Jewish communities worldwide. 
And Israel and New Jersey signed an agreement today to strengthen economic ties and technology partnerships. The New Jersey Economic Development Authority and the Israel Innovation Authority signed the accord this weekend before New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy and Israeli Consul General in New York, Danny Dayan. Murphy said the Garden State and Israel both have economies deeply rooted in innovation, as well as brilliant scientists, researchers, and academic minds doing groundbreaking work across a broad spectrum of high growth sectors. Adding that the New Jersey-Israel relationship already generates over $1 billion in annual shared economic activity. And he said, we hope that as a result of this MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, that number will double, if not triple, in the years ahead. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, October the 22nd at 7 o'clock, it's the wisdom of Dr. Ruth. At 8, a look at sports and American Jewry. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with author Larry Ruttman, who talks about his book covering the history of Jews in baseball on and off the field. At 10, Israeli author David Grossman speaks at the 92nd Street Y. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, it's the ILTV debate program, Frenemies. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, October the 22nd, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.